Hello people, Joe from Hello Sailor Effects here. Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be looking at the most important tool in your arsenal when it comes to uh, effecting repairs to either guitar effects pedals or any sort of audio equipment really. And that is of course an audio probe. In today's video we're going to look at how I build my own audio probe in case you want to have a go at it yourself, which I highly recommend. Uh, we'll also look at how I implement the audio probe and use it to fault find. I've had this Range Master back in for repair and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to show this. It, it kind of looks like it's been through the mill. The nitrocellulose on it is all dinged up. It's kind of how I like them. Uh, the switch is a bit bent here. Anyway, I have no idea what's wrong with this pedal and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll open up and have a look. Things you'll need to build your audio probe are, firstly, a jack lead. This is one of them screw together pedal patch types. I'm going to use this. You'll need another wire or another cable. I, I'm going to use this uh, multimeter lead. So this is this is one of my old uh, multimeter fluke leads. That's way way past its sell by date. I'm not going to be using this anymore. So I'll, I'm going to use this. Or you could just have another piece of cable. It doesn't really matter. And a capacitor. I advise using a 0.1 UF 400 volt capacitor. 0.1 UF because it's quite neutral sounding which we'll explain it later on in the video and 400 volts in case you decide to look at an amplifier um, and this will obviously um, needs to be rated to what you're looking at so with that said uh, also of course you're going to need some solder i say of course it's not of course there's no such thing as a stupid question or a stupid answer but you're going to need some solder and the solder and iron today i'm using my uh, hako fx something or other solder iron's my favorite one if this is something you'd be interested in, please please uh, stay along for the ride and hopefully we'll all learn something together. And if you like this video, like the content, please like and subscribe. It doesn't help the channel. I do all of this just because I really enjoy messing about with this stuff. Anyway, let's get going. Right, if you're new to this channel, then this may come as a surprise, but regular viewers will know that I was not prepared to film this episode. So instead of having a piece of paper and some nice pens and stuff, I've got a marker that I use for God knows what, and a, rip, a ripped up piece of, uh, of wet and dry packaging. Perfect. And this part of it, we're gonna go through uh, what each part of the, the audio probe does and also I'm gonna draw it out so you can see the signal path of the audio pro. So, first things first, before we start, I'm just gonna snip off end of this, um, this cable, because we, we only need one end, as it were, and you can make this as long as you like. It depends how, how far away from your audio, your amplifier, um, the piece of equipment you're working on is. So that doesn't matter, you can use it any length. I'm gonna start off with our, with our um, input jack, now, we'll use this dot here to represent the live of the jack. I'm going to go through the cable, and then we're going to come to this capacitor. Now, to orientate the capacitor, if your capacitor has such things on, the little line on it here denotes the outer foil. Now, this is, it doesn't really matter. You don't need to go into this detail. But if you're building an amplifier, you want to put that outer foil as close to earth as you can, or in the direction of earth. There's audio buff screaming at the screen now telling me either it doesn't matter or I don't know what I'm talking about. Fantastic, please write it in the comments. I love a good discussion. Um, so anyway, a symbol for the capacitor is two lines. So this is our capacitor. Now, what the capacitor is there for is, when you put your audio probe into the equipment, I'll show you how this is done. Electricity, DC, is gonna be inside that piece of equipment, whether it be nine volt pedal or a 400 volt amplifier. And this capacitor stops DC transferring across it for the most part before someone geeky comes and says, well, actually it lets a little bit through, whatever. So it stops DC dead in its tracks. So this is why we choose a 400 volt capacitor just to be safe. 0.1 is the most nutrient solvent. It doesn't really matter if you're using it for fault finding because, um, you know, whether it's making too much bass on it doesn't really matter. Anyway, so there's our capacitor in the circuit. And then I said, you need another piece of wire. For me, I'm using one that's got a handle because obviously if I'm going to put this in an amplifier, this is rated, rated to a thousand volts. But any sort of cable will do. 
and that's what we're going to use to touch the circuit with to check anyway i'll get into all of that you just need to follow this bit first make your own audio program and then we can implement it so then we have our cable coming out and that's going to go to whatever equipment we're testing now all of this cable here here we go joe h5 again all this cable here is going to be like a huge antenna to pick up noise that's just a fact and and that's because um well it, it just is if anyone knows if anyone's breadboarded any pedals you'll find that um that that your uh your piece of equipment that you're breadboarding becomes a huge mag like antenna for any sort of um volume or interference from outside right so what we're going to do is we're going to want to air that now in these cables the inner inner cable the very very center cable is the live and the outer cable so if i was to look at this at a, at a cross-sectional view we have our outer cable our rubber then we have a layer of earth earth cable and we have and then we have more rubber and then a live cable in the center so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to connect this earth cable here here we're going to want to connect that to the piece of equipment we're working on um, and that's that's because a it makes a circuit but b it um it airs the whole the whole thing together so it becomes a piece of equipment if you don't attach this cable you're not going to get any sound out of it now to attach that cable you're going to need something which i actually didn't specify in the very beginning being the unprepared joe h5 like i said um, you're going to need something like a crocodile clip and what's that what we're going to do is we're going to attach a piece of wire i've got a nice little piece of wire here you can use any wire we're going to attach that to this if if which is then going to go to our our crocodile clip what a terrible drawing that is anyway so and then this can attach to the piece of equipment that we're working on and this end can touch whatever we want to test in the circuit now if i've lost you please write in the comments and i'll explain a little bit better now this end of the earth is going to come through this cable and it's going to attach to to the earth that you would normally have on your on your jack plug so now that i've utterly confused everyone with that theory let's move on to making our our uh, audio probe right so here we have our jack plug with our earth shield uh, nicely tucked out the way and tinned and our center live tinned we also have our our wire the final wire i'm using this one of course attached to our capacitor and then we're going to attach our capacitor to the live to attach all of these together what i do is i like to make little hooks out of out of each connection and then hook them together so we've got a good mechanical connection and then that way when uh, when you're tugging on it and you're working you're not going to pull the cable apart there's nothing worse than coming to fix a bit of equipment you're all prepared and thinking about the equipment and then you come to your audio probe and it's fell apart which surprisingly enough enough does happen quite a bit because well it just does right there we have it this is our audio probe so this is going to plug into our amplifier i'm going to use my bench amplifier you'll see that in a sec usually you can make this cable as long as you like so it reaches wherever i've made it really short just because um, i'm going to use an amplifier on the desk we've got our live terminal here with our capacitor and then our earth terminal that's going to hook onto an earth inside the pedal or equipment that we're working on one thing i will say is if you're working on live or on on an amplifier where there's the potential for the capacitors to be live inside even though you should discharge them first it is worth well in fact you're going you're to have the amplifier on so that you're going to have live voltage inside when you're testing an amplifier you want to have some heat shrink that is rated higher than the voltage in your amplifier to cover the whole of this capacitor so there's no chance of you touching um any live wires here but as we're working on live volts it doesn't really matter so let's get set up for the test okay so here's a setup to to conduct our um test using our audio probe 
Well, first I've got my bench amplifier, which is a Black Star Fly. Um, it's a bit beat up now, but great. We plug our audio probe into it. This is going to be our probing end. And then we have the earth attached to an earth inside the pedal. What you need to do is pl plug in some sort of sound source. So you could use a guitar or even just a cable attached in and touch it with your hand to make a sound. However, I've got a, a wire tap, a TC electronic wire tap, playing some music provided by HB Guitar. If he's watching this video, he, he come and see me last time I was on board a warship. He come and had to play with some stuff. I recorded him playing because I can't play terribly great. And I use that for testing pedals. Right, so as we can see in here, it is a little bit, um, this, this board was loose, so that had crashed around. And the owner did think that the transistor, which is a tiny Mullard vintage germanium that was used as a, uh, a hearing aid transistor, he thought that might be defective, so we can test that. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and switch on our amplifier. It will have a buzz. And that noise is basically what I was telling you about this being a massive antenna and picking up sound. So. I, First things first, I'm going to touch the live terminal of our input. And please remember, this is another thing, that when you're doing this, everything's upside down. So your input's on the left, not the right. And the amount of times I've been trying to fault find on a pedal, uh, and you may say it's obvious, not so much to me. And then I find out that I've just put the jack in the, dis in the discharge. I'm talking mechanical terms there. Uh, the jack in the output side instead of the input side. So there's our input side. And as you can hear, we've got sound coming from our input jack, so we know that that cable's good to there. Right, next, I know that the input to the pedal, and the pedal's turned on, is this look here. And then the input to the circuit is this look here. So, really, if this jack, if this uh, switch is working, we should have sound coming out of here, that's the same as there. So let's test that. So now I know that our sound is at least making it out to the pedal so i'm going to test next i'm going to test the input capacitor where it attaches to the input capacitor making sure that that cable is fine then i'm going to test the other side of that capacitor and that will tell me if this capacitor is is destroyed or not so. so that's good So we're getting sound through to our, in fact, as you can see, for some reason I've hooked this over for another job and it is most annoying. So I'm just gonna straighten that out. <laughs> right, and we can see we're getting sound through to the input of the of the capacitor, uh, sorry, of the transistor. Now I know, because I wired this pedal myself, the output of this transistor is this lug here. So now if I go on this lug here, I should get amplification. So that's the input to it. That sounds a little bit muffled to me. And then the output. So as you can hear there, we know our transistor is good. So that kind of rules out anyone plugging the opposite polarity into it. So that's okay. Now from here, I know it goes to the range, the range pot. And then from the range pot, it goes to this capacitor here. So let's test it out. So right now we know we've got it coming from this jack to our three, three pole uh, double throw switch down into this input capacitor to our transit. Well, I hope we all learned something um, well, through the making of that video, I certainly learned to prepare for videos a little better.